Riddle me this, riddle me that. Who's afraid of the big black bat? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and in this installment of Versus, we're pitting the Batman Forever Riddler against the one in the Batman. For this video, we're looking at Jim Carrey's and Paul Dano's versions of the Riddler and seeing which one is the cleverest interpretation. If you haven't seen the new film yet, beware of heavy spoilers. Which one do you like better? Leave your answer in the comments. Round 1 – Backstory and Motivation As different as they are, both versions of the Riddler have varying ties to Bruce Wayne. In Batman Forever, we first meet Edward Nigma as a researcher at Wayne Enterprises. Mr. Oh, Bruce Wayne. No, that's uh, my name. And you are? Nigma. Edward. Edward Nigma. You hired me personally. Nigma idolizes Bruce and pitches to him a device that can beam television directly into a person's head. Apprehensive of the implications, however, Bruce rejects the idea personally offending Nigma and sending him into a tailspin. You were supposed to understand. I'll make you understand. After murdering his boss Stickley, Nigma adopts the Riddler persona. In a bid to get revenge on Bruce, he starts Nigma Tech and mass produces his technology with what he calls the Box, which he intends to use to become both richer and smarter than Bruce. You will help me steal production capital so I can put a box on every TV in town and become Gotham's cleverest carbon based life form! In The Batman, Edward Nashton is revealed to have been an orphan at the center Thomas Wayne sought to renovate during his mayoral election campaign. I'm just here to unmask the truth about this cesspool we call a city. When Thomas was murdered due to his own shady dealings, Nashton and the other orphans were largely forgotten. Nashton thus harbored resentment towards Bruce Wayne, an orphan with all the resources in the world. Years later, Nashton resorts to exposing Gotham's elite under the guise of the Riddler. If you are justice, please do not lie. What is the price for your blind eye? He targets corrupt individuals in positions of power, brutally murdering them before revealing their secrets. Becoming aware of Bruce's identity as Batman, he uses the dual persona to influence the investigation in the direction he desires. You're a part of this too. How am I part of this? You'll see. The answer to this riddle is a no-brainer. While Nigma's jilted employee incentive can be fun in its own right, Nashton's origin is more grounded in backstory and somewhat sympathetic. Winner, the Batman. Round 2 – Costume What's a good Batman villain without a decent set of threads? After brainstorming a series of underwhelming personas, Batman Forever's Edward Nigma settles on the Riddler and takes inspiration from the animatronic dummy among his collectibles. Who the hell are you? Just a friend. But you can call me… The Riddler. Relatively more in keeping with the comic counterpart's attire, relatively being the keyword, Nigma wears an emerald green form-fitting suit adorned with black question marks. In a bizarre effort to conceal his identity, he also wears a matching eye mask and bowler hat, the latter of which covers his new red do. He also carries a gold high-tech cane shaped in the form of a question mark. Like the jacket? It keeps me safe when I'm jogging at night. For his final confrontation with Batman, however, Riddler opts for a sparkling silver getup, and it is certainly something else. Was that over the top? I can never tell. <laughs> in keeping with the movie's tone, the Riddler in the Batman goes for a much simpler look. You came. I've been trying to reach you. Though he is in all green, the color is much more muted and secondary, doing a much better job at keeping who he is under wraps. The Riddler wears a considerably baggy coat, which also allows him to carry more equipment as he goes about his crimes. 
patched onto it is a white question mark, carrying over the character's primary insignia. To hide his face, he wears a military cold weather mask. Though there is thematically no military connection with the character, his glasses poking through are reportedly meant to evoke the Zodiac Killer, which is an apt comparison. As subtle and appropriate as the new look Riddler's new look is, we cannot shy away from the loud personality exhibited by the 1995 costume. Joygasm! Winner, Batman Forever. Round 3, Master Plan. Remember the plan. Seize and capture. The Riddler easily being one of the most cunning villains in the rogues gallery, it wouldn't be a Batman movie without him concocting a meticulous mystery for the world's greatest detective to solve. After fully becoming the Riddler, Nygma partners with Two-Face, who harbors hatred for Batman, even though they don't yet know he's Bruce Wayne. I will help you solve the greatest riddle of all, the mother of all riddles. Who is Batman? Together, they use Nygma's device to feed off the intelligence of the masses. At a launch party, Nygma manages to goad Bruce into using the machine, revealing his identity as Batman. Riddle me this. What kind of a man has bats on the brain? <laughs> Go ahead. You can see. You're a genius. Riddler and Two-Face then infiltrate and destroy much of the Batcave at Wayne Manor, but leave Bruce alive to fulfill their ultimate goal. After kidnapping Bruce's love interest, Dr. Chase Meridian, they lure Batman and Robin to their hideout, capturing the latter. Riddler tries to get Batman to choose between Meridian and Robin, but Batman uses his love of riddles against him, destroying the machine and warping Riddler's mind. The Riddler's plan in The Batman, on the other hand, is much more intricate and thought out. The Riddler is asking for you. The killer left this for the Batman. Why is he writing to you? He kicks things off Halloween night by murdering Mayor Mitchell, decrying the lies fed to the people of Gotham. He then starts leading Batman on a series of clues that will lead him to the real mayor of Gotham, crime lord Carmine Falcone. In addition to murdering police commissioner Savage and D.A. Coulson, Riddler orchestrates Batman's apprehension of Falcone. This gives Riddler a clear shot, as he's able to snipe Falcone dead from his hideout. How am I part of this? Oh, you're really not as smart as I thought you were. Bruce Wayne. This, of course, leads to Riddler's capture. But he's already set up a grand finale whereby a series of car bombs destroy Gotham's breakwaters, flooding the city before setting his followers upon the mayor-elect's victory party. While both plans incorporate Batman in a major way, Riddler's plan in Batman Forever feels more improvisational, whereas the one in the Batman is mapped out to a T. We're giving this one to the 2022 movie. Winner, The Batman. Round 4, Performance. Obviously, these two Riddlers are very different, and the performances given by their respective actors are also very different. The meteoric rise Jim Carrey was on in the mid-90s, he seemed like the perfect choice to play an eccentric Batman villain in a Joel Schumacher movie. Though many stalwart Bat fans may not take to Schumacher's colorful and wacky interpretation of the material, there's no doubt that Carrey's performance fits right in with the movie's tone. Very few people are both a summer and a winter, but you pull it off nicely. What's the point, big boy? Has anybody ever told you you have a serious impulse control problem? He's given a run for his money by an energy-matching Tommy Lee Jones as Two-Face, who infamously disliked Carrie during production. But trying to top Carrie's comedic timing is always going to be a fool's errand. Ah! You sunk my battleship! Who, me? <laughs> his Riddler is zany, witty, and more than a little batty. 
and even when the movie itself falls short in places, we can always count on Carrie to keep us laughing. Edward, please, who is Batman? I'm Batman. <laughs> Paul Dano, on the other hand, goes for a much more reserved approach. We don't see as much of his Riddler despite the Batman's longer running time, but Dano makes sure he has our attention whenever he's on screen. Though the Riddler's voice modifier in his broadcasts seeks to mask his identity, Dano's performance shines through regardless in cadence and intensity. Though he's usually cool and collected, this makes the moments when he lashes out resonate more further emphasizing the unhinged nature of his character. This is especially true in the scene wherein Batman interrogates a maskless Nashton, as the latter withholds one more trick up his sleeve. I've been trying to reach you. For the good! Paul Dano is undeniably captivating in The Batman, but when it comes to scene-stealing performances, Jim Carrey's gonna win every time. Winner, Batman Forever. The difference? Showmanship. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Round 5. Riddles Yes, the Riddler's favorite pastime is going to be what settles this versus once and for all. If you look at the numbers on my face, you won't find 13 any place. That's hideous. What does it mean? It's a riddle. Numbers on my face, 13, 1 through 12. The answer is a clock. Clearly the more theatrical of the two, Edward Nigma carries this over to his riddles, going to great lengths not only to cut out magazine words ransom style, but also to create pop-up and interactive cards to go along with them. Ah, uh, tear one off and scratch my head. Once was red is black instead. A match. The riddles themselves vary in degrees of difficulty, with the clock clue being fairly obvious and the match one a little more of a thinker. However, the answers to the riddles themselves are arbitrary, as the real riddle lies in the numbers appearing in each. When push comes to shove, Bruce and Alfred are able to transpose each into a letter until they reveal the Riddler's identity. 18 is R M R E. How about Mr. E? Mystery. And another name for mystery. Enigma. Mr. E. Enigma. Edward Enigma. It's honestly a bit of a stretch, but we guess we should also question who named him E. Enigma in the first place. Edward Nashton's Riddler, on the other hand, doesn't need to be ornate with his designs to intimidate. He merely picks out some particularly creepy greeting cards and scrawls upon them with his unsettlingly simple handwriting. Let's play a game, just me and you. The riddles themselves are meant to condemn his victims and their corruption using clever wordplay, but buried within are a series of clues that lead Batman to uncover Riddler's origin and the next step of his master plan. It can be cruel, poetic, or blind, but when it's denied, it's your violence you may find. Justice. The answer's justice. While Batman is right in thinking this will lead him to the Riddler, he unwittingly also plays into his hand by getting Carmine Falcone killed. What's black and blue and dead all over? This is honestly a tough call. However, Nashton's riddles are a bit more effective and logical in the grand scheme of things, as he's also able to tell a story with his twisted point of view. This round goes to the Riddler from The Batman. Winner, The Batman. You came. I've been trying to reach you. With a score of three to two, The Batman wins this installment of Versus. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.